Hello everyone, um, my name is Abby and I am the Young Adult Assistant at the Twin Lakes Library System and I use she, her pronouns. So um, I just wanted to say really fast that if you hadn't watched uh, last week's book recommendation videos that Dabney did, I really encourage you to go watch that one. It has a lot of really good books in it. So getting on with today. Um, so if you didn't know or were unaware, uh, June is actually Pride Month, so I wanted to discuss some books that feature um, LGBT, I wanted to uh, discuss some books that feature LGBTQIA plus characters. Um, I, I did want to just, I did want to say really quickly that um, this is a very there's only, I'm, I'm talking about three books here, but there's a wide range on Hoopla that you can explore. Sorry, it keeps pausing because of poor connection. Um, there is a wide range of books that you can explore that I definitely recommend you looking into. These are just three of my personal favorites. Um, so feel free to check them out. And then of course, um, there's a large variety in our actual collection at the Mary Vincent um, library that I really recommend once we are back to really offering physical services again that you recommend checking out Dabney has created a wonderful collection that I think everyone should look at so today I'm gonna get started so the first book I'm gonna talk to you and I'm actually back with all of my books I'm back with all my books so I can sorry <laughs> Uh, I'm back with all my books today so I can actually show you what some of these look like. So the first book I'm going to be talking about today is Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda, which is a very popular book. Um, a lot. There's a movie adaptation of it if you don't know yet, but that's the first one I will be talking about today. Um, we have it in audiobook format on Hoopla and it is recommended for ages 13 and up. So the plot of this book is Simon is a gay teenager, but he nobody knows that. He's sort of kept that to himself. He tends to want to stay out of the limelight. He really enjoys like musicals at a school, but that's like the most he wants to do. Um, so he keeps that part of himself really hidden. But he has started an email correspondence with a boy who uses the uh, anonymous like name called uh, blue. That way it keeps their identity secret from each other. They don't know each other and it's just completely concealed. And so Simon emails with blue back and forth um, all the time and he started to really develop a crush on blue and kind of sort of wants to figure out who he is. Um, but then something happens where uh, somebody at school sees one of their emails on a school computer and uh, between Blue and Simon, and uh, does someone sees some of their emails between Blue and Simon and decides to blackmail Simon and threatens to reveal his secret if he doesn't kind of do what he says. So Simon sort of has to try to deal with the blackmail while also dealing with like high school drama and kind of dealing with um, kind of dealing with not not being ready to come out just yet and it's sort of being a secret from his friends and his family and sort of coping with all of these things at once. So why I like this book? Um, I think it's incredibly readable which means it's I found it really hard to put down when I first read it for the first time. I read this book twice and it's not super long. It's about three, 303 pages. Um, I, re I read it twice. I think it took me like two days to read it both times that I've read it. So I really think it's a fun read and it's really fast paced and really good to go through. Um, what else? It's very lighthearted. So you, so the, despite the fact that there's like blackmailing happening, which would make you think it's not very lighthearted, it actually does a good job of staying pretty fluffy and um, cute and not ever super super stressful like there are definitely some important topics being talked about um, in terms of like self acceptance and coming out and being gay and what that means in high school um, but it Becky <laughs> sorry um, but Becky Albertalli does a really good job of making it still very lighthearted and fun and comedic 
Um, the next thing is they have really good, they're really good relationship dynamics. Um, so Simon has a really good bond with his family and he has really wonderful friends who are awesome. Um, and even though they don't know, they're all wonderful with Simon and I really like all of that. As I consistently say in my videos, I really enjoy um, relationships, so I like seeing that uh, in books. Um, the romance, <laughs> sorry, uh, the romance is really cute. Um, I love uh, it, despite the fact that it is mostly happening over email. Um, I think the romance is fun and interesting, and I really like the relationship that Simon and Blue develop. Um, and Simon is just a great main character. I think he's a really relatable teenager. I think she, he's funny. I think he has real problems that a lot of um, other teenagers can relate to and understand. So I like that. And of course there's a movie and it's a really good movie that came out um, that I like. So the story sort of is shown on screen and I think that the movie did a great job and it was a great adaptation. So yeah. Is my first recommendation. Um, my second recommendation is going to be A Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. Um, and this book is an ebook and audiobook and it is recommended for ages 14 and up. So the plot of this book is Monty is a, <laughs> uh, I like that enthusiasm because <laughs> it is one of my favorite, favorite books that I've ever read. Um, so Monty is a young bisexual British lord going on his European tour during the 18th century. So a tour, the tour that he's doing is essentially his last big like hurrah before he, he is expected to take over his father's estate and has to become a very responsible adult. Um, and so he wants to make sure it's as fun and grand as possible because Monty prefers having fun over having any sort of responsibility. He is very chaotic and yes, Monty is definitely a mess, but a lovable mess. Um, Monty also is kind of dealing with a crush he has on his best friend and his traveling companion, Percy, um, which he's trying to sort of come to terms with in trying to handle all of those feelings because, you know, during this time, being LGBT wasn't necessarily widely accepted, especially by Monty's father. He's not awesome. We don't like Monty's father. Um, so he's trying to handle that while also kind of coping with the expectations placed upon him. And so they're on their grand tour. It's Monty, it's Percy, and then there's Monty's younger sister, Felicity, Felicity who also is on the LGBT spectrum, by the way. Um, and they're all on this tour, and Monty's just, Monty is sort of just being himself. Um, but, uh, Monty does something super reckless that causes him and Percy and his sister to have to go on the run. So you'll see more in the book. So why I love this book. Well, first off, there is a sequel that follows, it, I guess it's technically, um, it's technically a companion novel, but there is a sequel that follows um, Monty's sister, Felicity. And then there's actually a, apparently supposed to be a third book coming out that follows uh, Monty's youngest brother, which I'm super excited about. But, so, continuing series, which, as I've said before, I really like. Um, I think there's a good mixture of, like, genre bending, so you get a little bit of a bunch of different genres. So, if you sort of are kind of don't have, like, a favorite genre. So, for me, I don't really have, like, a favorite genre I read in everything. So, I read historical fiction, uh, fantasy, contemporary. So, like, Simon vs. the Homo Sapien Agenda is a contemporary novel. And I love that just as much as I love a gentle. Uh, I love A Gentleman's Guide, which is like, uh, it's kind of historical fiction, and, ah, uh, yes, and Davney was just saying, there's also the novella A Gentleman's Guide to Getting Lucky, which is on Hoopla. The other two, uh, the other two books are not on Hoopla, because the third one hasn't been released yet, and Felicity's book is just not on Hoopla, but The Gentleman's Guide to Getting Lucky, um, novella is on Hoopla. Thank you, Daphne. Um, but 
this is like historical fiction, romance, kind of magical realism, which if you don't know what magical realism is, this is kind of like their fantastical elements to it, but still sort of set in the real world. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff happening in here, and Mackenzie Lee does a great job at like mixing it all in together and making it work. Um, It's also super diverse, which I really appreciate. There's a lot going on in here, which is nice to see because, again, this is set in the 1700s, so you wouldn't necessarily expect that, but Mackenzie Lee included that, and I think she did a good job with it. There's great representation, so the LGBTQIA plus representation is really awesome. Um, there's good disability representation. There's kind of like good feminism portrayals and like what it was like to be a woman during that time. Felicity is an amazing character, amazing side character. I'm so glad she got a second book to, um, to talk to, uh, to talk with about with her and see her as a feature. I love her. Um, this book also discusses again a lot of really important social issues, what it meant to be on the LGBT spectrum during that time. Um, what it meant to be to have a disability during that time and how that was treated and regarded. It talks about racism um, and discrimination in that area. And so there's a lot of different things going on that are really well done and handled uh, appropriately. Um, and then I think my favorite thing is watching the characters develop. So like Ashley said in the comments, Monty is a mess and very irresponsible. Um, but he does develop throughout the book and he develops in a really good way and it's really awesome to see him transform into the character that he becomes at the end of the book. Uh, to see him transform, uh, into who he becomes. <laughs> yes, he does try very hard. Um, but he becomes a better person and I love seeing that and I think Percy makes him a better person. So, um... The last book that I am going to talk about is um, Of Fires and Stars by Audrey Colehurst. This is an ebook and audiobook form, and it is recommended for ages 13 and up as well. It's a very pretty cover. Sorry. <laughs> um, so, this book is about uh, a princess named Princess. I'm going to get this wrong. I apologize. A uh, princess. Dialea, 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 I think, uh, is stuck in an arranged marriage and has been her entire childhood. Um, the marriage was proposed as a way to like build an alliance between the two kingdoms that are in there. Um, and then Dena also, her nickname is Dena, uh, also has magical abilities uh, that do with fire, but. Uh, that's kind of a problem because they're forbidden in the kingdom she's going to marry into and so she's a little nervous about that but that's like a um that is like a detail that is also included so she goes to the new kingdom and she's trying to learn um all the new ways of her kingdom and one of them includes <clears throat> um one of them includes riding war horses and she is taught how to do that um uh, by Princess Mare, who is the sister, sister, excuse me, of the prince she is supposed to be marrying. And they kind of have a not so great relationship during this time. They don't get along super well. Denna doesn't really like Mare's personality. She thinks she's a little prickly. Um, but after an assassination happens in the kingdom that they are living in, Mare and Denna um, team up together to kind of figure out who is the culprit and they sort of start to grow closer and um, kind of transform from a friendship into sort of a more romantic thing. Um, and they sort of have to decide like what's more important to them, their own personal happiness or, um, or their kingdom and what it's expected of them. So reasons why I love this book. Um, there's a sequel, uh, which is really cool as I keep saying. Um, I really enjoy series. Um, so this originally was planned to be a standalone, but Audrey Colehurst gave it a sequel. And there's also a companion novel, which I said in a few videos ago, but if you haven't watched that, a companion novel is 
books that are sort of set in the same world but don't necessarily follow the same main characters. Um, and those are also both on Hoopla. So if you happen to read this book and you decide you really like it and want more, um, they are on Hoopla. So, um, the, this is also an Own Voices novel. So this is um, that that means, if you don't know what Own Voices means, is that Audrey Colhurst, the author, identifies somewhere on the LGBT spectrum. Audrey Colhurst doesn't really ever specify what the sexuality of the two um, girls are, but it is LGBT, so I, I don't want to necessarily classify Audrey. I don't want to necessarily classify Audrey Colhurst as one thing, but it is counted as an own voices novel. Um, I think it's a really great romance as well. I think they have really good relationship and bonding and chemistry and it all works so well. Um, well, I love them. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's also the world that Audrey Colhurst built is um, a really accepting world. So nobody really cares the fact that two girls are falling in love. It's more to do with, um, it's the duty of one of them to marry the prince and that's more where the struggle is. It's not because they happen to love someone who identifies as, as who both identify as female. Um, and I think that that's really awesome. It's, it's nice to see a book where um, prejudice and homophobia doesn't exist. And I think that's great. And I liked seeing that um, in a book. So that was cool. Um, and I also really liked that it's fantasy. So I feel like a lot of LGBTQIA plus novels, they don't ever really venture outside of um, contemporary or coming of age novels. They tend to be set in the real world. Um, it was nice, it's it's nice to see that it's becoming more mainstream that you're seeing LGBTQIA plus characters in fantasy settings. And I enjoy the fact that this is a fantasy setting book that features an LGBT couple. Um, and it was nice to see, and it, it's becoming more mainstream, but it's still not the most prominent genre for LGBT rep. Um, and then I think the magic system is really well developed in this book, so that was cool to see. So yeah, those are three recommendations I have. Of course, there is a variety of books, and they represent a variety of different sexualities, and I really encourage you to look for them and seek them out and read them because there's so many good books that feature LGBTQIA plus characters that are you learn a lot from, you can connect with. It's a great, it's really awesome. So thank you for watching and I will see you on Friday. Bye-bye.